you know what I really want to do after, after a song like that? I want to tell you that, that Jesus told two of his men, he said, now his coming back was going to be like two men outside plowing in the field. He said it was going to be something like this. These two men were out there, they were working, they were plowing in the field, and the Bible says that he looked over and the other one was gone. He said it was going to be like two women and they're going to be girdling at the meal. In other words, he said they were going to be there stirring up some stuff. And, and one looked over to the other and she's gone. Beloved Jesus is coming soon. And I almost want to change my lesson, but, but a young man gave me a note in the foyer. And we're a teaching church. We believe that if you have a Bible question, that you need a Bible answer. And I told him that I would answer his question before the message. Don't want to take a long time. His question, and the reason I said that I didn't want to answer it privately, there might just be somebody else who have the same question in mind. He said this is his third week visiting our church. And he says each week we take the Lord's Supper. His concern was, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he comes. Now, he says, you guys do it every week. He said, now, do you have Bible for taking the Lord's Supper I wish y'all walk with me here, and I'll be at the message just a minute. But I want you to know, I, you need to know. Now, I want you to do something. I want you to get for me, Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. I want you to get for me, Acts chapter 20, verse 7. And then I want you to get for me, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 1 and 2. Now, if this is not enough for you, we'll, we'll talk privately. But I want to show you the reason why we take the communion every Lord's Day. For the Bible says in, 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 in Acts chapter 20 and verse number 7, the Bible says what? And upon the first day of the week. Now watch this, and I want you to underscore some stuff. It says, come on back, come on. Upon the first day of the week, read. When the disciples came together to break bread. When the disciples came together to break bread, read. Paul preached unto midnight, ready to depart upon the morrow. Now, let's go back over. I want you to see it. Come on back. Upon the first day of the week, he says, when the disciples came together, what did they do? They broke bread. When did they do it? On the first day of the week. Now, I know, just stay where you're at. Now, Exodus chapter 20, verse number 7, the Bible says what? Exodus 20. He said, Thou shall not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. That ain't, I want verse 8. Verse 8. This preacher mistake. Verse 8. Watch this. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Now, watch my, watch this. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Now, now, now I want you to get for me 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 1 and 2. Verses 1 and 2. And then I'll make this. Now concerning the collection of the saints. As I've given orders to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Watch this, read. Upon the first day of the week. Now, there's something very similar in Acts chapter 20 and Acts 1, 16, 1 and 2. Now, now watch this. The Bible says, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Guess what it didn't say? It didn't say remember every Sabbath day and keep it holy. It said remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. In other words, if every week have a Sabbath day, then you need, I wish I had praying folk, then you need to keep it holy. Uh, uh, okay, you missed that. Let's try this. If you went to work on a job and they told you we paid on Fridays, guess what they don't have to tell you? We pay every Friday. If you let a Friday pass, talk back to me if you can, and you don't get paid, it's going to be some trouble up in there. Now, we understand 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 1 and 2, when the Bible says upon the first day of the week, 
uh, 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 I lay by him in store as God has prospered him, but there'll be no gathering when I come. You know what that means? Simply means take up a collection. Take up a collection. When do I take up a collection? On the first day of the week. Now, it didn't say every first day of the week, but I bet you this, you're not gonna get out of here today without us taking up a collection. Is that all right? Now, why is it then when he says up on the first day of the week, come together to break bread, we now want to qualify, is that every first day? Well, it's the same first day. Better show it to them. They're looking funny. Uh, 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 Acts chapter 20, verse 7. Acts 27. Flip it back for me. Talk to me. Come on. Uh, up on the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread. 1 Corinthians 16, 1 and 2. Verse 2 for time's sake. 1 Corinthians 16, Verse 2, up on the first day of the week. What's the difference between this first day and that first day? We're going to take up the collection on the first day, but yet we don't want to commune. Come on, talk to me up in here. But we don't want to commune on the first day. We say we do this as often as we like. God did not give us authority to do that. We've got to do what the Bible says like he says it. Does that make sense? Beloveds, we need a dust, said the Lord, for whatever we do. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 3, and I know I got a long way to go. I've been accused of being a long-winded preacher. I need to be on my sermon. But now watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. The Bible says Moses, as a servant, was faithful to his house. He said, this is Christ's house. Christ say what goes on in his house, are you here? Come to my house. If you come to 17003 Cross Springs Drive, that's where I live. I paid a note. I paid a note there. Mama help. Mama help. I ain't no fool, y'all. <laughs> but now watch this. Because that's my house, you gonna do what I say in my house. This is Christ's house. We got to do what Christ say in Christ's house. Does that make sense? Now, if that wasn't enough, if that wasn't enough, get with me after church because I want you to know it's important. And I thought that was a legitimate question. And I didn't know who, some people might just take it and don't know why. Now, we just came off of what I think was one of the greatest revivals we've ever had. That boy preached up in here. And let me tell you something, let me tell you something, let me tell you something. The theme of our revival was breaking every chain. Now, what I wanted to do, I wanted to see, I hope you don't mind. I'll preach to you next week, but can we be in a Sunday school? I want to teach you something today. Do you mind if we just, just study? Just study. And I want you to see, I want you to see that two things. Number one, they've been breaking chain since the beginning of time. When Christ set up this church, uh, they were breaking chain then and they break, still trying to break some chain now. But then I want to show you how to be able to understand and research and get the most out of a text. With that in mind, meet me at Acts chapter 12 and verse number 12. I will not reread the entire text because I want to explain this this morning. So good to see all of y'all today. Got some special people in here with me today. The Bible says in verse 12, are you there? If you notice people around you are standing, they're not about to run out of here. We just believe in standing in reverence to the word of God. We stand when the judge walk in the courtroom. We stand when the bride walks down the aisle. We certainly believe that we can stand for the reading of the word of God. Verse 12, the Bible says, and when he had considered the things, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. Spirit of the living God, just take a hold to this place. If I'm too high, bring me down. If I'm too low, master, will you raise me up? If I'm too wide, will you bring me in? Will you help them see little of me and more and more of you? And we'll be very careful to give you praise, honor, and glory. And all of God's children said, Amen.
You may be seated. This morning, I'd like to tag the text, Breaking the Chain. Breaking the Chain. The text unfolds in the life of the church when it was very young and in its infant stage. Beloved, there were members of the first century church who were eyewitness to the life, to the teaching, and to the ministry of Jesus while here on earth. Yes, there were those who, who, who witnessed Jesus turning water into wine in John chapter 2. There were those, Tony, who knew the nobleman when he healed his son in John chapter 4. Beloved, there were those who watched Jesus take five loaves of bread and, and two small fish and feed 5,000. There were those who knew Lazarus, Robert, and knew that he had been dead, knew demodification had begun to set in his body, knew Jesus stayed four days before he ran into Bethel, and when he made it there, he raised him from the dead. Beloved, the church now was bathing in an early morning resurrection. The church was on fire. You see, they were fellowshipping one with another. They were breaking bread together. They were spreading the good news of the gospel together. And listen to what the Bible says in Acts chapter 2 and verse number 47. The Bible says, and had all things in common. All believers were together and had all things in common and sold possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had a need. The Bible says, and they continued daily with one accord in the temple and the breaking of bread in the house to house and did eat with gladness and singleness of heart. And then they said they were praising God and, and having favor with all the people and the Lord was adding to the church. You got to see this man. The first century church was together. They were hanging out together. They were loving together. They were more kind, Philip. They were considering one to another. Oh, how I wish today that the church in 2015 could be like the first century church. Boy, I wish it was more love in the church. I wish I wish I had prayer folk. I wish it was more understanding in the church. I wish we cared more for one another in the church. But you know and I know we're too busy now. We're too busy, Robert, just trying to keep Sister Jones and Sister Smith speaking. We're too busy trying to brag and boast about what we've got and where we come from. We're too busy, too many little churches inside the church. We are arguing and fussing over things that don't matter. People are dying, and we, I wish I had praying for, people are dying, and we are tearing out the church over stuff that don't even matter. Ah, oh, but can't you sense the love of the first century church? Beloveds, we are arguing over the Lord's Supper. We are arguing, can you use a base mic? We are arguing over things that don't even make sense. And if you were here on last week, that brother helped us. That brother, let me tell you, oh, I better not, I'll go too far. Stay with your lesson, Glenn. Beloved, it's the church now was beginning to grow. It was growing. Walk with me here, because I'm going to take you to the text. So walk me in Acts chapter 2. You remember Peter? Here he preached the first sermon. The Bible says when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord on, in one place. And the Bible had the Bible tells us that that was a visit from the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that that, that, that 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 was a mighty rushing wind to fill the house where they were sitting. I better stop here. That measure of the Holy Spirit fell upon the apostles. It did not fall upon you and I. Ah, y'all looking funny. Don't look like this. Let's do a little teaching here. I feel like a little commercial right here. Watch this. There were three measures of the Holy Spirit. John chapter 3 said Jesus had the spirit without measure. Jesus could do whatever he wanted. He could go to the graveyard and raise them. He had that measure of the Holy Spirit. And then that was the baptismal measure that was given to the apostles. Are you hearing that? Now, we have the Holy Spirit, but we have what was called the, uh, the ordinary measure of the Holy Spirit. All of us need to be filled with the Spirit. If you want to know why folk don't have no joy, because they don't have the Spirit of God. For the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, if any man have not the Spirit of God, he is none of his. Did you read that? Yeah, come on, let me just go a, a little deeper. So now watch this. The Holy Spirit visit them, and the Bible says that they began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now watch this. 
David, put up for me, Acts chapter 2, whole verse 36. You got to see this. I'm headed to the text. Now, 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 now he began to preach 11, 17 different nations was there. And he had began to preach that, that Jesus, this Jesus, you guys have crucified him. Y'all killed the Messiah. Now listen to me right here. He said the Messiah, the long-weighted Messianic Messiah who had been prophesied by all of the prophets, you he has come. He, he did not come like you thought he was going to come. You thought he would come on a nice chariot with Clydesdale horses, big rims on his wagon, and ride into the city. He did not come like that. He came sitting on the back of an ass. And you could not accept it because it was not what you... Come on, y'all, I'm going somewhere with this. You could not accept it because how he came in. But watch this. In the sermon, Peter told him, don't worry about it. Don't have to worry about it. He said, man, I know you didn't know what you were doing. The Bible says, and let all the house of Israel... Come on, read. And let all the house of of Israel know assuredly that God had made that same that same Jesus. You gotta get this. That same Jesus that you killed, God has raised him up and has made him both Lord and God. Now watch this. The Bible says, when they heard this, they were pricked to their hearts and said, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And notice all they had to do, church, get this. All they had to do is repent and be baptized. Beloved, we give people stipulations God haven't given people. All they had to do was, was repent. They had killed the Messiah, man. Anthony, I know you haven't done that physically. Now, some of us has done it spiritually. Don't look like that. I'll show you. I'll take to Galatians chapter 2 and show you that every time we act a, a knucklehead, we are crucifying our Christ. Amen. Preach, Glenn. Amen. But now watch it. He said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the remission of your sin. And you shall receive. So now the Bible says 3,000 souls was obey, obeyed that day. Now watch this. Get it. In Acts chapter 3, Peter and John was about to go into the temple. Being the ninth hour, the hour of prayer, I'm in, in Acts 3, if you're looking for me. We are a Bible-based church. We believe in teaching and preaching the Bible. He said, now, they were on their way into the temple. That was a man who had been lame from his mother's womb. Now, if you look at verse 22, I believe it is, it shows that he had been like that for, for, for 40 years. You know what knocks me out about that, Prince? 40 years, them people picked this man up and took him and set him at the temple. 40 years. Man, let me tell you something. That's a long time to go by and pick up a lame man and bring him to the church. Beloved, but because of his love. (laughs) Okay, okay, let me move. So now watch this. The Bible says he was looking upon Peter and John. If he was going to get help from anybody, he should have got it from a preacher. Some of our preachers don't want to help nobody. Don't cut me off. Don't cut me off. So, okay, okay, I better leave that alone. So they walked in the temple looking to expect an arm from him. Peter said, silver and gold have I none but such as I have. If I had time, I'd show you why he didn't have silver and gold. Mark chapter 9 or 10 told him to go out and preach and leave their purse at home. So silver and gold had he none. He said, besides as I have, I give unto you. He said, now, he said, but in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And the Bible, now here's here's what we don't teach, y'all. In in, in chapter 3, Peter preached a second sermon. Now, this sermon is connected to the raising of the lame man. Look at verse 12, I believe it is. Is it 12, Prince Reed? And when Peter saw it. Now, watch this. When Peter saw it, walk with me, y'all. I'm headed to the text. Just give me a minute. I didn't preach last week. uh, Okay. (laughs) Watch this. Watch this. When Peter saw it, watch this. Read. He answered unto the people. He answered unto the people. He said, you men of Israel. Why are you so surprised? Why are you looking at why are you looking at so earnestly at me? Why are you looking at us, looking so earnestly at us, as though by our own power or holiness we made this man walk? 
Why are you looking at me? Read. The God of Abraham, Isaac. He said, you want to know who healed him? It was the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Read. The God of our father. Uh-huh, read. Glorified his son, Jesus. Boy, this is some good stuff, Philip. He delivered up. You better watch this, man. Read. Come on. He, he said, now, wait a minute. He said, you remember you denied him before Pontius Pilate. You remember when Pilate says, I find no fault with him, and you said crucify him, and you chose a sinner over a saint? He said, now, this man, this very man that you turned over to be killed, God had raised him up. Come on, read, man. But you denied the Holy One and the just. Uh -huh. You denied a murderer to be granted unto you. Come on. And killed the Prince of Life. Uh -huh. God had raised from the dead. Well, we are witness. Underscore, we are witness. That's important. He, what Peter is saying, I'm not giving you secondhand information. I'm telling you what you saw. You know what? That's why I really have a problem with a Jehovah Witness. See, now, if you are a Jehovah Witness, then that tells me you saw. If, if we got a police officer, police officer in here. Is there police? Anybody, anybody, police officer? Got, where my police officer? Well, Andre, I need him. Okay, well, if, if, if we were sitting in here and we heard, Ski pow! And, and the police came and says, are there any witnesses? And we say, well, I heard it. Well, you're not a witness because you didn't talk back to me. Peter said, we are, we saw it. Are you seeing this? Read, come on, Prince. And his name through faith, in his name hath made the man strong. He said, it's in that name that this man is strong. Read on. Whom you see and know. Get the next yeah, verse. The okay, and now, brother, I want that, that though it through ignorance. He said, now, nah, listen to this. And this is good stuff. Know. Hold on. You got to see it. He said, now, I know what you did to Jesus was through your ignorance. You had no idea what you were doing. Are you seeing this? He said, you didn't know what you were doing, but that's okay. Because you were ignorant, that's okay. Watch the text, read. But those things which God before had showed by mouth of all the prophets, that Christ should suffer, he had so fulfilled. Now watch the next verse, read. Repent ye He said, now all you, you killed him, but all you have to do is repent. Man, be, repent ye therefore, and be converted. Change the way that you think. It's so important that you understand this. If you don't get this, when we get to chapter 12, you're going to be lost. So walk with me here. So now we see the church now. Get the next verse. 19, the Bible says what? Repent and be baptized. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins might be blotted out. Watch this. Look at verse number 19. Is that, that's the one I want. God loves us so much until regardless to what we've done, you better hear me. If you are willing to change your ways, God is willing to forgive you. But here lies the problem, Stephanie. It was not that God would not forgive them. Here lies the problem. And I want you to see, the problem was this. The problem was people were being saved, but it was not according to their system. Ah, I need, I need you. I need, okay, watch this. Chapter 4, verse 1. I'm headed to the text. It's taking me a minute, but you'll see it. In chapter 4. Verse 1, the Bible says, they spake unto the people, and as they spake unto the people, the priests, now the priests represent the Sanhedrims. That was the government at that time. He said the priests was and, there. And the captain of the temple. Now the captain's responsibility was to make sure there was no turmoil during the feast day. Read. And the Sadducees. And the Sadducees believed that there was no resurrection from the dead. No resurrection. That's what they believed. Watch this. And the Sadducees. And then watch this. Read. Being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection. From they the were dead. mad because all they taught was the resurrection from the dead. Beloved, if there was no resurrection from the dead, you and I wouldn't have been here. If there was no resurrection, he could have called 10,000 angels uh, to set him free. But he died. He was buried. Got up with all power in his hand that you and I might have the right to the tree of life. But people were being saved and it was not according to their system. Oh, boy, I could really get ugly right here. Because what they were saying, it's Christ. This is what it's called. Hear me now. Institutional thinking. 
It's called institutional thinking. In other words, in other words, this was not about Peter and John at all. It was about institutional thinking. See, they had that had been embedded in their heart. Whew. Can, can I just can I slow down just a little bit? Because you gotta see this thing. See, see, when God sit this thing out, he put Adam and Eve in the garden. He wanted them to have everything that they wanted. But because of their disobedience, they went to God and said, give us a law. Give us a law. He didn't want to govern them. He knew that they could not hold up to the law. But they wanted a law. They wanted a law. So what they did was they took Moses, went on top of Mount Sinai. He received what was the Ten Commandments. Come here, Moses. Come here, come here, Moses. Sit on your throne. Now, Moses is sitting on the throne. Now, he is the one that's in charge. You got to see this now. He is the one. He is the lawgiver. He is the one that was in charge. Well, the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31, behold, the day will come, said the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judea, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers. In those days, I took them by the hand, which by covenant they broke. You hear all what Jeremiah is saying. I'm going to give you something better. You can't handle this. This can't take care of your sin. It can only expose. Y'all not feeling me up in here. See, when you are driving 80 and the speed limit is 70, the speed sign can't, can't reduce your speed. It can only show you that you're speeding. See, the law could only show you that you were sin. Y'all not feeling this thing, man. He said, it can only show you. He said, now I'm going to give you a better cover. He says, because... Romans 15 and 4 said that they were weak. Galatians chapter 3 said that this was a schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. So Christ is going to come on the scene. Now watch this. What these people wanted was this. Move over. This is what they wanted. They wanted Christ plus the law. Are y'all seeing this? Christ plus the law. Christ is not going to share his glory with anybody. Okay, y'all not feeling this thing. Acts chapter 15, verse number one. Let's make it live. Acts chapter 15 and verse number one. The Bible says what? And certain men went down from Judah and taught the brethren, saying, except you be circumcised after the law a matter of Moses, you cannot be saved. They say, you can have Christ, but it's got to be Christ plus circumcision. God is saying, no more law. No more law is Christ and Christ only. Beloved, let me tell you something. What we have done, we have said it's Christ plus. Now, I better drop this in because somebody, somebody say, well, you teach Christ plus baptism. I say, you're right. But you just told me it can't be Christ plus nothing. Well, here's what I want you to understand. The circumcision was given by man. The baptism is given by God. It's not Christ plus man. It's Christ plus God. And I'm going to tell you what we do. We put Christ plus this, Christ plus that, Christ plus this. Let me tell you something. When we teach Jesus and what he has done for us on the cross, you don't have to threaten a man to do right, Angie. All you have to do is let him know what God has done for you. So now, so now, Robert, the, uh, uh, the church began to grow. They begin to grow in Acts chapter 5. I think verse 14, the Bible talks about uh, unknown. He said, and believers were more added to the Lord's church. Uh, Acts chapter 8, uh, the Ethiopian eunuch was baptized. In Acts chapter 9, Saul of Tarsha was baptized. In Acts chapter 10, something really broke out. Cornelius now, Sophonia, has come into the body of Christ. And all the Gentiles now can freely worship God. No longer do they have to hide or be a proselyte. They can come in as a Gentile and worship God. Now watch this. Satan gets angry because the church now is flourishing. He's mad. He's mad. And he always tried to stop the church of our Lord. 
Ah, so why, I want you to see this. So look at the text. We're at the text now. We're at the text. We're at the text. Look at, look at chapter 12, verse 1. The Bible says, now about the time, Herod the king. Now you got to, let me show you about Herod. See, Herod was appointed over Judah by the Roman Empire, Claudius. Claudius despised. He despised the Jews. And what he did was he picked Herod because he knew Herod uh, uh, was a despiser of the Jews. But can I tell you, all of the Herods was bad. All of, that was no good Herod. You remember Herod the Great murdered, murdered the Bethlehem children. Herod Ampas was involved in Jesus' trial and John the Baptist's execution. Herod Agrippa I murdered the apostle John. Herod Agrippa II was one of Peter's judge. Man, this Herod family was a scheming family, and this stuff was passed down. Herod the Great, Herod Ampas, Herod Agrippa I, Herod Agrippa II. In other words, what, 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 what Grandpa did, Daddy did. What Daddy did, Son did. What Son did, Grandson did. Men, you better be careful what you are passing down to your children. Some of us are setting some bad examples. You find a man who beats his wife, I can almost show you a son. Amen. Boy, they're getting quiet right up in here. You show me a woman that was unfaithful to her husband, I can almost show you a daughter. Because that stuff is passed down to every... So if that be the case, then why don't we pass down godly fears in our children. I wish I had praying for We ought to understand what needs to be passed down. So the Bible says, now Herod stretched forth his hands to vex the church. Ah, I need some help right here. The word uh, vex, chaos, was a word meant to do harm to the church. Can I tell you something? Because the church, our church has some haters. Our church has some haters. We got folk in here don't want to see this church do good. I don't know why you keep coming. I, I really don't. It, 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 it just blows my mind. But let me tell you something. Your hands are too short to box with God. You, you, your hands too short. You can't stop God's work. Are you hearing? Y'all don't know. I feel like tan up up in here. But I, I, I want to show you something. So, so look at verse 2. You got to see this. In verse 2, the Bible says he killed James, the brother, with a sword. Now, 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 now I want you to watch this because here's what happened right here, Stephanie. Uh, James' mother in, John, in Matthew chapter 20, verse 20. You remember uh, James and John's mother? The Bible says she worshiped God desiring something of him. Get this. She said, now, Jesus was headed to his demise. Paula, he was on his way to die. So Salome, these boys' mama, came and said, now, when you get into your kingdom, I, why will you let one of my boys sit on your right and the other boy, come on, talk back to me, sit on your left. And, and, and Jesus said, woman, do you know what you asked? Do you know what you just said? And you know what? Sometimes I ask myself, do we know what we are saying? When we be saying stuff like, Lord, give me more patience. Do you know what you're saying? When you ask for more patience, he got to send you more trials. Are you hearing me? Lord, I need some more. I need to be more loving. When you want to be more loving, he got to send some unloving people. And I wish I had praying so. When we, we better, do we know what we are saying? Lord, give me a spouse. You stingy by yourself. What you gonna do with a spouse? You don't wanna share now. My question is, do we know what we are asking for? I'll never forget this. Robert and I, before we was elders, Robert and I trying to get this church going. We down here praying, talking about, Lord, grow the church. Lord, Lord, will you please grow the church? Will you please grow the church? That next week, there was the shoulders down the street. Shoulders is a, a drug rehabilitation center. Them people sent us a busload of people down there. <laughs> and Robert talking about, we were praying, but I wasn't asking for that. <laughs> you got to be careful what you ask God for. 
And the text says, watch this. The text said, the text, what, get, what gets me, the, uh, he asked, he said, do you know what you said? And guess what she said? <laughs> had no idea. Roshika, she had no idea what she was asking God for. For the Bible says, watch this, y'all. He said, the suffering. He said, now, can your boys take on the suffering that I take on? Now, whenever you trace suffering in the Bible, you'll see that it's always related to suffering. Uh, a cup is always related to suffering. Then whenever you, baptism, baptismo means an immersion. But this one was not immersion in water. This one was immersion in pain. He said, now, can your boys take the pain that I take? See, they had no idea that Jesus was going to have to go to the Garden of Gethsemane. And you remember he told his boys, he said, now, watch for me one hour while I go yonder and pray. And you remember Jesus returned, and them boys were sitting there asleep. Jesus says, man, you couldn't even watch for me one hour. You know what? It takes, a, it takes me one hour to go to the barbershop. Yeah. One hour, man. You can't watch one hour. It takes some of our sisters one hour to get them lashes done. Are you hearing me? You can't watch for me one. Are you seeing this? Watch this. Jesus went back and he told them, sleep on. And he suffered, man. The Bible says, the Bible says in, in Matthew 26, 36, that he was filled with sorrow. Lupeo in the Greek, which simply means that he was surrounded by pain. The text picks up momentum and say that he was, it was extremely hard. Atamaneo means everywhere he turned, it was pain. But then Luke gets the physical side and say when Jesus began to sweat, it was great drops of blood, uh, which is a very unusual phenomenon, which is called humanidrosis. It's when the vitamin K no longer coagulates in the vein and Jesus fell to the ground. He says, oh my father, oh my father, oh my father. He said, if it be thy will, Take away yes. this bitter cup. And then he said, not my will, but thy will be done. Beloved, yes. James ended up getting his head cut off. And Peter was exiled, and, and John was exiled on an island called Patmos. So watch this, y'all, because here's what I want to say. I need, need about 10 minutes, and I'll be done. You got to see this. This thing gets good to me right about here. Watch this. You see the phrase? Uh, cut with a sword. If I had time, I'd take you to Deuteronomy 13 where it talks about when somebody was, was not honest or was not holding up the gospel, it was a false teacher that you would cut him with a sword. So they were accusing these men of preaching false doctrine. And the only doctrine they was preaching was Jesus had been resurrected from the dead. And you can say you're going to be saved by Christ and Christ alone. Not Christ and this list of folk stuff that we give people you got to obey. We have come up with our own list. Okay, Christ, but I need you to do this. I need you to do this. I need you. God didn't tell us to do all of that. That's what you want me to do. That's your preference. And we've made your preference doctrine. So watch this. Don't miss this. Watch this. Watch this. So the Bible says, and, 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 and verse, now what I like about Herod, Herod was not a part of the church. Herod, listen to me, wake up and get this. Herod was not a part of the church. In other words, the church in the first century, the enemy was not in the church. He was outside of the church. Are you hearing me? See, see, let me tell you, we don't have problems with crackheads and prostitutes. That's not our problem. Oh, a crackhead might break in here and steal your PA system. But for the most part, our problem don't come from crackheads or, or, or gamblers or racketeers. Our problem come from preachers. Our problem come from deacons. Our problem come from sisters from brothers. Our problem is not out there. Our problem is in 